My name is Michael Wienswick from Integrity. We're an IBM Premier Business Partner with main presence in America and the UK. Today we want to focus on explaining to you an IBM analytics solution that we provide that sells a lot of IBM file net and data cap applications, uh, where it benefits you, how it benefits you commercially, how it benefits your customers, where the pain points are, where the value is. So we'll shoot straight into this. So Integrity is a 17-year business partner of IBM. We are owned by a company called Roslyn Data Technologies as the uh, parent company. Integrity uh, sell predominantly IBM Analytics solutions with over 300 customers in 35 countries today, from very small accounts to very, very large super customers that we've implemented. On page two. So you'll notice on the slide here that Integrity have a whole range of the IBM suite that we sell, all powered around the IBM suite. So from FileNet to Case Manager to Case Foundation, Data Cap, uh, and the i2 product suite. What we've done is take IBM software applications and place working business solutions around those. So for example, if we, if we use the example that IBM's products are eggs and sugar and salt and flour, the knowledge capture wrap around our specialized applications are the cake that makes it all work. We bring it all together. So any time that we sell to a customer, it'll sit uh, with IBM in co-partnership, it would sell a range of these different application modules with our wrapper on top to make it all work. Page four. So what we're going to talk about today really focuses in on the accounts payable and the uh, procurement departments within any corporation. They have a major issue that they receive invoices and purchase orders and credit notes, that they update SAP and legacy systems to oracles, the JDEs, they're updating the SAGES, but they also have a vast amount of information from, it could be emails, it could be from EDI applications, it could be from social media, where customer suppliers, vendors, brokers, contractors are working with the corporate and managing the purchasing, delivery and payment of products. Within that, these complex issues about how to create a supplier, how to qualify a supplier, how to onboard a supplier that can sell, you know, we can buy and sell products from, the, your policies, your contracts, the risks that come with that, and also how it doesn't get out of control financially into a business where you end up with so many suppliers that that's not affordable to run your business. So the integrity applications called Knowledge Capture uh, expert in the area of capturing all your data sources from all the different sources. Now, the real value that we offer is in the, in the customers that we're targeting typically is a corporation like a Sony or a um, an EMI or it will be a super corporation that has offices in 20 countries that have 20 different finance systems with 20 different buying patterns and how we can bring that all together from a point of view of accounts payable and also procurement processes. So the first differentiator that we offer, as it shows here on page four, is we wrote hooks directly into DataCap and FileNet that extract PC files, images, that extracts invoices, purchase orders, credit notes, it extracts the data out of SAP Oracle and social media and puts it straight into the central FileNet repository. Our differentiator is the open API hooks we have with Oracle, et cetera, SAP, and how they can be leveraged to create a single source of data, structured and unstructured. Page five. So this diagram here shows how IBM, where IBM fits its portfolio of products. So if you look here at the bottom in the far left-hand corner, every time a case is created, a new supplier, and onboarding for purchase orders goes into FileNet. So inherently it sells a FileNet license within the company. On average, if we're talking to you know, the bigger corporations that have offices in 50, 60 countries, you're gonna need at least have 100 users system of FileNet. If you look at the top end there, number one, the, the capture of unstructured data, the ability to capture invoices, that requires data cap. And it's gonna sell 
60, 70, 80 thousand dollars of data cap every time. In the middle, we have a choice to use Watson or our own product for content analytics and management. And as you start to go down the bottom um, left hand side, right hand side, sorry, you've got data cap uh, file net for uh, business process management and workflow. You know, some customers are looking for investigative control at the top at number six. We're looking for I2 to look for fraud and analytics within fraud. So we're going to overlay that now and how we differentiate and how we help resolve these business issues. Page six. Firstly, some credibility. IBM and Integrity having such a long-term 17-year relationship, we understand each other in the cloud. So Integrity was the first major business partner to engage globally with IBM and endorse the cloud. And today it shows you some of our many customers that we've rolled out. And it shows you that our sales on average in the cloud over life cycles are between a, you know, 200,000 US dollars, 170,000 pounds, or 450,000 dollars, know, 350,000 pounds, or $3 million, which is you know, 2.5 million pounds per sale. So having a cloud-based proven application, we're able to use IBM fixed term pricing or we're able to use PPA, depending on what you want to do with your customers on-premise or in the cloud. So we range from small sales in the SME market to large corporate sales in the high-end super vendors. Page seven. Integrity being part of Roslyn provides us a wider spread of customer base where there's absolute expertise in the area of spend analytics. And Knowledge Capture now has the spend analytics module that takes all the data out of the finance system, such as SAP and Oracle and many others, bring it into a, into a common system. So if you look at some of the major customers here, a huge number of universities across America and worldwide, um, some super corporations such as the Coca-Cola brand, um, Diageo from Point of Drinks, Sony's, the Kingfishers, you know, Blue Cross. These, these are great names. The value they have, all of them one common problem. They could have 10 or 20 or 30 different companies they own, each with their own finance spending application for procurement where they're buying products um, in their different countries or different regions. That could be because of a merger or purchase of a company. It could be because they're in just multiple different locations. It could be for legal reasons and territory reasons. But most companies, you know, that are international will have over 60 type of systems and they keep it separated. Now, at a top level, they use Excel spreadsheets to consolidate a look and a view of the data sources. What we've done as Integrity and the empowerment of the Rosman Group is we are able to take everything out of those spreadsheets, everything out of SAP and SAGE and I recall, and bring into a common view with one look and feel for everything in the 60 different countries. That gives a power to start doing analytics and spending. And then say, for example, you've got 850 different suppliers for stationery. If we break that down to 20, we can go for economy of scale on discount rates and get a 25% discount. One customer alone, by consolidating the suppliers, saved over 84 million pounds in the first year a substantial savings. As Paul will talk later in this presentation, the average ROI is less than 16 weeks, you know, closer to 12 weeks from implementing this, this IBM FileNet data cap, data analytics cloud with knowledge capture. Page eight. So how IBM is paid? Let, let's get right down to the dirty stuff up front just to make it quite clear. For spend analytics to be successful and for accounts payable and contract management to be successful, you have to be able to capture data and store and retrieve the data. To achieve that, IBM and Integrity have gone into partnership where Integrity sell IBM's file net called IBM Case Foundation and IBM sell, and Integrity sell IBM's data cap application, which is an image capture product so it takes invoices and it can extract a hundred lines of data in a second and put those invoices straight into file net it can take a contract from a supplier that's been sent to you in the post scan a hundred pages and put that hundred page contract straight into the digital file so as a sales rep 
with an IBM in any country, we can sell Passport Advantage with you. So we can do a PPA or we can use fixed term licensing and these other options that we'd look at on a case by case, which could be integration into ELAs, it could be using PVU pricing or a range of other IBM models that we can consider. The real value to IBM is our target market as a corporations and the finance group and the procurement group that will result over 100 licenses of file net being sold and a minimum of five enterprise level data cap systems resulting in a front end sale of 200,000 and then annual subscription post that. The important point is integrity having worked with IBM for the last 17 years and explicitly in the cloud the last three years, we know how you're recognized. We know how you get FREV and CREV. And we ensure that when we work with you on a deal in a co-sell, that you'll always get the C and F. We'll work with you on how, how that best benefits you at IBM. So we'll talk later to this in the, in the presentation. Page 10. So we're not going to be able to put a scanner on your desk and show you how to scan a document, but we will demo that to you now um, using some slideware. And then we're going to go into a couple of deep contract demos. So a lady comes along with a scanner. She puts a piece of paper in here, which is an invoice or a contract from a supplier using IBM data cap as the image caption module and phone it as the archiving tool. We are able to scan and process that document, the invoice, credit note, the supplier purchase order, the customer supply contract, and put it straight into our knowledge capture platform. So as shown here, the document is now scanned and the supplier contracts are automatically known to go B contracts and go straight into supplier contract workflow. Checks for payment have gone straight to the check processes, letters of requests from suppliers or invoices immediately and automatically captioned, scanned, and placed in the white and the correct work queue. That's what DataCap does. Now we're experts in data cap with invoice accounts payable processing. We have a huge customer base in England and America. We are global as a company, as I said, in 35 countries. But the key thing, these two markets are the most important to us in the Caribbean. The, the value of that is we're able to leverage the technology that's shown here, the scanner document, extract the content, and within a second take 100 lines of data off and put it straight in line using data cap. The value to the customer is they don't have to retype the data, the errors of typing, the amount of time it takes to extract the data, the um, processing, the corrections. Again, still in data cap, page 14. So the outcome of that is the documents have now been scanned and they're put into, into FileNet, leveraging the data cap release tool. 15. But what we're also able to do is with our technology, we have a handshake, three-way handshake, two SOP and Oracle and the Siebel's and many other products. So we are able to take the invoices and the contracts and compare them to the relationship with that supplier and to say, yes, this invoice is valid against the purchase order, the totals match, the payment matches, pay that invoice. And that saves vast amount of time. So if you, have, if you had 20 staff doing this today, we'll get you down to 10 staff, that kind of concept. It's a significant financial savings in the accounts payable area, but also on contract management, the capture of those. So go down to page 16. And then what you're able to do is a user is able to do a search and retrieval from the knowledge capture powered by FileNet to look at an invoice or look at a purchase order credit note or a supplier contract simply by using any field of interest to the customer. So if, you, if you're a Kingfisher, you can type the name of the company you want to talk to. It could be um, Wong Fred Shop. You type that in and it just brings up a copy of the invoices or the, the supply contracts, etc. We'll go into supply contracts in more detail in a moment. We're now going to go into contract management where I'll pass you over to Sam. We'll give a brief introduction to what our contract management is about. Um, Paul and Sam will jointly cover this part of the presentation explaining what the FileNet capture does, leveraging FileNet, leveraging data cap. Over to you, Sam. Okay, thank you very much, Michael. So the short demonstration I'll take you through uh, will cover off the contract management components that we can offer within the, the knowledge capture solution. 
However, what I plan on doing is starting off with what is the problems and what are the, the risks within contract management and how the solution can negate those risks and improve your business processes when dealing with contracts. So typically there are five steps to contract management and these are authorings, so the general creation of the contract. The second step is collaboration where different business units, different members of the teams need to be involved in order to actually sign off and make sure they're happy with the contract. The execution phase is where you're working directly with the, the end supplier or end customer to actually get that contract signed off. And then we have the admin process which is followed by the closeout, renewal and an analytics side of the contract. Across each of these five steps there are three key components though. Control, visibility and compliance. Now by leveraging the IBM FileNet solution, the IBM DataCap solution, we automatically bring control and compliance to this due to the industry leading security capabilities where each and every user that has access to the system, the documents and data they have access to is based on user definitions, user groups, and the organization can control that down to a document level. Where certain organizations struggle though is visibility. And inherently within contract management, what you'll often find is substandard saving mechanisms, uh, a lack of consistency, and poor metadata, especially with legacy documents. So what we're able to do is introduce improved visibility to these contracts in order to reduce risk in the business and for the organization to be able to search through this content a lot quicker to find any terms or conditions that may be of interest to the organization moving forward. So the first demo I'm going to start off with is just how we can drag and drop new content into our repository. So if I go into my Outlook system, what we have here is the, uh, the ICN plugin set up already. So I have visibility of my contracts folder within our collaboration room environment. What I can simply do is drag and drop this email into the system. And this will include all of the attached uh, information relating to this particular email and store this within this folder. So rather than me having to manually copy out this content from an email into a Word document, for example, and then loading it in, it's automatically put into my system. And what I can also do is drag and drop this document in. And this will launch the entry template process. So when using entry templates within this system, we can get very granular as f in regards to the metadata that we actually load when uploading this document. For the time being though, just for demo purposes, I'm just going to use the document title and I'm just going to add this into my repository. So we can now see we've got the two documents we've added in and now uh, accessible in this repository view. So if I go into my repository and cl just click refresh on this view, we'll now see the two documents have been loaded in. So one and two. So straight away, as a user on the system, I'm now able to access and view these documents to actually understand what's in the system. Uh, if I'm part of a different team, I now have access to this content and I can start um, with the collaboration processes to make sure I'm happy with the document itself. As we can see though within this particular folder, we've got some documents that have relatively good naming conventions, but the ones at the top, um, it may have seemed like a good naming convention at the time, but as of right now, it looks like a, a jumbled mess. And this is often the case with contract management. Uh, a lot of the legacy files, a lot of the legacy systems, perhaps would have been saved by certain saving mechanisms quite some time ago. However, these days when you come search and try and find this information, it doesn't make sense to the end user. What we can do though is start to search within the documentation. So rather than just relying on the metadata that's saved against this content, we can now use full text searching to actually go against the actual information in the, uh, in the document saved. So if I run my first search, what this is going to find is any documents with the name integrity included in this. So this could be my initial um, supplier or initial um, organization. I'm looking to understand what documents and data I have within the system for. And on the left hand side, we can start using the facet trees to actually define and drill into this content further. So say, for example, I'm only looking at contracts that were created and have been signed off within this year. I can use this facet tree to drill into 2017 and refine my results. So I've gone from around 75 results in the system down to uh, eight results now. So again, from one quick search, I've, I've drastically reduced the amount of content I need to review and I drastically reduced the amount of time and effort it takes for the business to actually understand what's in the system. 
I can take this further as well by actually adding additional search terms, search clauses into my um, particular search here. So in this case, I'm going to look for any contracts that are specifically with Integrity and Cisco. And from my perspective, I'm able to then search for different uh, supplier terms. So in certain documents, they may be saved to Cisco or Integrity might be saved as Integrity. In other documents, it could be Integrity LLC. It could just be the initials. And with this type of full text search capabilities, we're able to drill into that content very quickly. In the results list, you can start to see the different highlighting, different colors for the different terms we've looked at. And these types of searches can be run for different um, contract clauses and contract terms as well. So if, for example, I'm looking for documents that contain the words 45 days payment terms or anything other than 60 day payment terms, then this system makes it a lot easier to actually look into the content to find when those documents are there. If, for example, you think that all of your suppliers are paying on 60 day payment terms, however, running a search for 45 days highlights a few different suppliers, a few different contracts that are out there, it gives you that visibility. And later on, when we go into the spend analytics side, it can be very important when understanding the potential savings and the potential money you can make uh, by updating terms or making sure your contracts are in order when you're actually signing and uh, supplying them to your customers. So at this stage, what I'm going to do is just jump back into the slide deck and we'll go on from there. So, Paul, would you mind giving your sense of what the real business issue is around contract management in the finance area? Yes, certainly, Michael. Um, good afternoon. Paul Cook here from Roslyn. Um, the big issue that our, our clients are facing in terms of contract management is that many contracts are held locally on individual laptops in offices all around the world. Um, they're typically scans or TIFFs or a picture of some sort, and they're not in any real central repository. So a lot of our clients are saying to us, you know, we, we know it's an issue where as we're changing the shape of our company and contract trending, where we're finding surprises in terms of termination clauses or penalty clauses that we didn't know existed or evergreen contracts that are rolling over because we didn't know that they were there with those clauses in place. And they'd very much like to get their data in a single, in a single place, preferably in the cloud, and then be able to search this data for um, discrete words or discrete clauses and understand where that's affecting them in the world, i.e., you know, is this going to affect me in Singapore if I terminate something in London? And, and, and these are the surprises that, that really hurt the business because they don't, they're not aware of, of, of the penalty or the knock-on effect of doing something locally when all the contracts are held disparately. Thank you, Paul. Sam? Perfect, thank you. Um, so as we go through uh, just some of these slides here, the, um, as Paul was saying, it's very important within the business to actually have that, effectively that single central archive for all contract information. So by leveraging the technology we've discussed today, so DataCap and FileNet, we're able to provide that single central archive for all content moving forward. Due to the analytics capabilities that Watson brings in as well, we're able to then do further analysis and investigation on those contracts to reduce the risks as they're being processed by your organization. What we provide is effectively an information intelligence and management system. So all of this data across a whole host of different communication channels, capture channels, can then be brought together to actually understand and view the risks associated with your contracts. So we've talked already about emails, we've talked about PDFs and actual contract information, but as other information around that contract, around the creation of a contract, is captured and processed by your business, all of that information can then be loaded into the central system as well. So we have hooks into the unstructured data sources like social media, emails, uh, voice video information, but we can then also look at the very structured information that's being processed via, it could be invoices, credit notes, um, and also the contracts as well, and have that real combination of unstructured and structured data all within a central system. As, uh, as shown, we have the ability then to do those comprehensive contract analysis and discovery uh, processes where we can really dig into the actual content of the contracts and find the information we're specifically interested in. And what this leads into is effectively a single digital file 
of everything. So a single case of all content related to your contact management process. If you need to lock this down and uh, process this down legal cases, due to the underlying technology and the security available from IBM FileNet, that is available for you to do. So it becomes very easy, very quick and easy to actually build this central case, build this central view of contract management in order to help your organization process things more efficiently. So we've been through uh, some of the demonstration, but what I'm going to do now is um, pass on to Paul for Spend Analytics. Uh, Michael, is there anything else you wanted to add on the contract side? I think the key point to summarize here is that each time you promote your customers, that you have contracts all over the world for your suppliers and your purchases, that IBM now have a product, a contract management tool, to capture and control all contracts and consolidate them into a single pool, it makes you about $200,000 a sale of IBM software. So we have millions of consumers today, users using our technology, it's proven, it's scalable for data cap in our cloud, and I found it in the cloud. The pain point is targeting the CFO, Director of Finance, the Director of Procurement, so the CPO, and saying that we're able to take all your financial data at a country level, keep it in country, at a global level, keep it in a, in a single secure location, enabling you to start analyzing and making decisions about contracts, reducing these risks, ensuring you're compliant, making service levels. That's just a summary of what Sam said. Now we're going to go into spend analytics for a minute. Let me show you the slide here on page 26. This slide articulates everything we're trying to say to you. It really summarizes it in the simplest term. And you might have a company like Sony that's in Canada and America and Brazil and Australia and China. That company buys products locally in every country. Therefore, they have a procurement department in every country. And they have a finance department in every company to pay those invoices. Problem is, they, they each then have a single system, a finance system in country, because you've got to pay local taxes and local systems. So you might have a local SAP and then another country might have an Oracle system, another company might have a Sage system. What we've done as a company, Integrity and Roslyn, is integrated the ability that we sucky sucky all the data from all the different countries into one common view. Again, powered by DataCap and FileNet to give one single analytics view of all the groups. So today, at the top level, at a corporation, let's talk about IBM, you know, in over 100 countries, you have 100 finance systems, but at the top level, you do not see the product level down to the part code. We do. So what at the top level, you'll say we have services of 25 million in, in New Zealand. We had 2.5 billion in England. You had 10 billion in America. But it doesn't break down to the next level, the next level, the next level, all down to the part code. That's what we provide, the ability to bring the complete data source by country and then start to spend analytics on that. Next slide. That's the real differentiator here to IBM. So if we then look on this page here, the ability to analyze the reports is most important. I'll pass it over to Paul to carry forward. Thank you, Michael. Paul. So um, what we can see here are um, some screenshots relating to some of the reports available within Rapid, which will we'll show it in a live environment. Um, but there are um, discrete management dashboards. There are payment dashboards. Um, there are tail end spend dashboards. DPO dashboard. So these, all of these dashboards are, are configurable and available as long as the source data has been extracted and cleansed using Rapid. Can we have the next slide, please, Sam? Great. So what we're trying to achieve by, by using the product is using our um, certified extraction tools to bring data from what we determine as data swamps, and many of you will probably know as data lakes or big data initiatives. Um, we, you know, they, they really are just very toxic and deep swamps. We'll bring the data into the cloud 
put them through the data refinery, cleanse the data, enrich the data, and visualize the data in a single format in a cloud environment. The optimum point here being that end users can self-service the data, therefore it's agile, light, and very cost-effective to use. Next slide, please, Sam. So I'm just going to, to, um, to go on, on to the live site for you now. Well, Paul, shares the screen. Let me just leave a, a, a message to you guys. The, the value that we bring is we wrote the hooks between SAP and Oracle and other financial systems directly into the central analytics solution. That's the real power that we bring IBM. We bring the value-add partnership that brings parts of the puzzle that IBM do not have. So the anecdote I had was the one that we talked about earlier. If you have 850 different suppliers all selling different stationery, and you can get it down to 20 suppliers. You can then go back to those 20 suppliers by, and they'll give you a greater discount for a greater spend. That in turn gives you a higher profit within the business. Secondly, if you can go from 850 suppliers down to 20, that is 830 suppliers you no longer have to deal with and you no longer have to contract with. If you're in the food industry and you have to address each one personally, the cost of that is substantial. So these, you know, the ROI from different areas of of savings and um, discounts is substantial. Back to you, Paul. Okay, so I think you can all see my screen now. So, it's a bit like an iPhone. It's made up of a series of apps, and end users can be told or can tell themselves, depending on their accessibility, uh, what apps they, they can have, what apps they can have access to. I'm going to simply look at some spend analytic apps for today's demonstration. And I'm going to start using a thing called Company Enrichment, which is the integration of um, Dun and & Bradstreet and, and Rapid. So I'm just loading the product now. I'm putting one and a half million lines of data through the system, and it's returned some results for me. Where we have a green tick, we have a very good and accurate match. Where we have an orange dot, we have a fairly good match, but, but we missed a bit of work. Where there's a red dot, there's a lot of work to be done. Just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to show an orange, an orange match. So here we can see that somebody has typed this information into the ERP system as being the correct address for the supplier. We found this using our um, integration with DMB. So here you can see we've gone from what is very low and poor quality data to very clean and very high quality data including the longitude and the latitude, which is critically important if you're in, in supply chain or procurement, because if you have a disaster in country, you need to know your exposure immediately to that country, and we'll cover that later. But it's telling us that there's some candidates. So it says there's a lot of candidates, but our machine thinks it's the top one. So we could quite simply look on the map, and now we can see it on the map, we can say, actually, that's correct. Or we could say, you know, do we have this information somewhere in our, in our raw data? There's all that lovely rich data actually showing on an invoice or a PO or something. And, and we're just looking in the data now. Sorry, it's take a while because it is looking for discrete information in one and a half million lines in a live environment. And it's come back and found 7.8 million. So we now know that that is, um, that that is correct. So we can do two things. We can just now accept that, assign the company as the correct one, or if we know something different, we can actually type it in manually. But that's the, the ability and the importance of cleaning your data. You need to know the location of your suppliers before you can start doing proper supply management, proper supply control. I think, I think questions are at the end, so um, we'll, we'll, we'll happily take questions on that at the end. Um, I'm just gonna go back to, to my homepage. The next thing I'd like to show you is um, within the Spend Analytics dashboard, and I'll just go to Spend Analytics dashboard here. So here we've landed on our management dashboard. So very quick overview of what we're doing today. We've got 1.46 billion pounds worth of spend, 138,000 invoices. We're 93.5% categorized against UNSPSC categorization and we've got 5,500 active suppliers. We can see from our KPIs that we are 
fairly good at contract. We're very good at on-time payments. We're not very good at POs. We're not very good at using preferred suppliers. And we're very good at, at categorization. The heat map is merely showing us where the most spend is. But what I think I'd show you today is I just look at, if I just look at some spend opportunity, is how you can get real data out of this. Uh, and the first thing I'd like to show you is missed opportunity. Uh, missed opportunity is, is very interesting because here we can see, um, and if we said it was $125 to process end-to-end -end paperwork for a procurement, here we can see that we have a lot of organizations and the red lines represent where the cost of goods are less than the cost of the paperwork. So we can now be looking at this and thinking, well, we've got a problem because we're clearly losing money on our, on our transactions. Should we be looking at invoice consolidation, supplier consolidation, introducing purchasing card programs, or simply looking at any invoicing tool to take the cost of this paperwork away so that we can get more value from our um, from our opportunities and from the management of our business. If I was not happy at company level, I could maybe look at it by cost center level and just see who the culprits are. And here I can see uh, it's the, the Beijing computer company is the, the big culprit. But I might want to say, well, what department is, is doing this? Um, and here I can see it's a department called No Department, which is very useful. Um, so data is not that, not that brilliant from this particular company that we're looking at. But this missed opportunity is, is, a, is an excellent way of seeing the value and the need to reduce the paperwork and the manual labor in your organization. Um, the next we might want to look at in terms of, um, in terms of suppliers maybe is, is our tail end spend. So tail end spend is a big problem as Michael touched on before in certain industries that's highly regulated, you need to have a personal interaction with all suppliers. If I said I wanted the top five suppliers to represent 60% of my spend, here I can see I have a, a little bit of a problem. I can see that in some areas I've got you know, 603 suppliers of which five are 60% of my spend and the remainder are 40% of my spend. I have a huge problem in terms of controlling my, controlling my quality, con controlling the cost of doing business, um, but more importantly, the cost of paperwork. I need to be looking here again at supplier rationalization and maybe PCAR programs, but certainly I want, maybe want to look at geography and see you know, why, am I, why am I doing this? Why am I wasting so much valuable time and resources on, on such, a, such a large amount of suppliers in a, in a small category? I might want to look at um, cost. All companies are interested in, in, in money. Um, our, our days paid outstanding, our DPO app application, allows organizations to see what their true DPO is. Many companies say we pay everyone in 60 days. The reality is here we're paying in 42.7 days, and this is the real data, so this is the actual DPO. If I was to take a treasury rate of, say, 1%, and then said I want to pay all my suppliers 10 days later, that's worth £400,000 a year to me in that one small change. Now I might say I want to look at a particular supplier and that particular supplier is saying to me, if you did a better, if, if you did a deal with me and you paid me five days early, I'd give you a small discount of 2000 pounds. Well, in this instance, that's worth it because it's worth 221 pounds to do so. So I do that deal. But in some instances, that might be hundreds of thousands of pounds to do a deal and it simply isn't worthwhile doing it. Another thing I'd quite like to show you is, um, is geography, so, so supplier geography. So here I can see, and I'm just gonna, just gonna clear this data out. Here I can see my spend per country. And if someone said, I want, I'm very interested in seeing my spend in the Netherlands, I can see my exposure straight away. And I can immediately see the city, the suppliers, the spend, the amount of invoices, the amount of POs. I can see immediately what my exposure is and how I can mitigate that exposure. I can look, again look at this in any dimension. I would look at it by department, I can see it differently, although the, the data won't change in this particular view. Another one that's very interesting and one of the things a lot of our clients like to look at is comparative analysis. 
So what are we doing month on month, year on year? And we can start, can start com comparing, say, Q1 this year to Q1 last year. And like you said, it's exactly the same. So uh, we're not growing as a business. Oh. What we might do, what we'll do here now is go into a, um, a, a very quick summary and then go into a Q&A with you guys if we can. Um, the point that Paul's showing you here is we're able to analyze and review any source of data. The, the real differentiation to IBM is the ability for us to take data sources from anywhere in a structured or unstructured manner. Now, IBM talks about that to a lot of customers but don't have the apps. Now, um, Charles, are you on the call or is it Paul? Could we go to the reference slides for a moment and give some examples of how customers are saving so much money? For example, a UK customer, Paul, you could talk about if you can, you know, saved £84 million pounds just by moving those lines around and doing consolidation of spending patterns. Can you speak to that? I can, yep. So this was a, a global engineering company that um, had no idea um, I, I'm sorry, Michael, this is actually a university case study. Yeah, well, it's your slides. So could you talk about um, your customer yeah. if you can? Don't worry about this university. Okay. So um, this is a university that was, that was looking at understanding the, the cost of recruiting students and the cost of actually educating those students. And they, what they wanted to see was, is there a correlation and can we see if we're actually making any, any money? Uh, and at first, first view, um, they were not, so that they made some changes in their in their business that then enabled them to manage um, the margin, so the gap between the cost of recruiting students and the cost of educating students versus the fees they were receiving. And by making some simple changes, by using the data, making simple changes to their business model, they turned a, a non-profit business into a profit business. So the important point here is we have sold this to over fifty universities in America. That's the important point. We'd like to work with you in the education unit in the higher education area to replicate that to the 4,000 different higher education and schools. It's scalable and repeatable. So if there's any, on, anybody in the IBM team on the education team here, can they please reach out to me after this so we can give you some of the case studies. Another case study was Yale University. They spent a million pounds with us in the cloud to consolidate all their student records and all their... Um, their leases for rental apartments and all this, all their um, loan repayment documents. So the value we've got here is a proven university and higher education application for saving money. The point to your customers is just by buying this, they save money. The ROI, again, around 12 weeks to 16 weeks is substantial to any company. So that they will talk to IBM, they'll spend you 200K. That's the real value to us both. What, what's the next customer? Sam? This is a global media company that um, needed to understand, again, they had very disparate businesses, disparate cost centers, uh, disparate ERP, multiple spellings, um, multiple languages, multiple currencies, and really needed to understand a single global version of the truth of their data. By by aggregating the data in RAPID and by aligning the, uh, the, the, the data cleansing apps and the company enrichment apps, they were able to get a complete picture of their data um, and make some real business decisions, particularly as they discovered that they were actually had many, many contracts, many supplier agreements with the same organization for the same product at vastly different prices sometimes in the same town. So they were able to go back to their, to their um, suppliers and do a global ERFP and dramatically reduce the cost of those goods and services. They were then able to um, take the spend under management and rapidly move that into more controlled cat um, categorization buying. So using category managers rather than using procurement managers they were then able to take control of their category, reduce the amount of suppliers in there, add more value to the suppliers that remained, and also manage the line-level detail to enable them to um, ex accelerate their return on investment. And in this case, 
Now, the return on investment was about 12 weeks. So it was a, 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 huge, um, a huge amount of return on their investment with, 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 with our products. The value to yourself is the customers of the Los Angeles-based multimedia corporation, one of the biggest in the world. Again, we're able to replicate that across any of your multimedia customers across America, England, around China. So please talk to us about whoever runs your media department with an IBM. It's going to be a minimum of a 200K benefit to you as an introduction. It's going to give you much more stickiness with your customer, a value-add message. It will drive additional applications such as Watson. This is an application of media that sells itself that we are able to look at a win price. Because if you're able to save $50 million, you know, within six months of using it, let's not worry about sending it for 200000 together. Let's go in together, understand the, the ROI benefit to them, IBM and Integrity taking our products, really taking a shot into the media industry. So now it's two great industries of education and media that we can go after. Next story. So this is actually um, the, 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 the same um, sale, um, but the lessons learned on this were, you know, this massively reduced the time to sale. It, it, because there was so much low hanging fruit, the ability to, to deliver a very quick return on investment, it actually meant that the, the, the sale came to us very quickly. But we, we had the client actually saying, you know, we want to buy this because we, we, we can see the low hanging fruit, we can see the ability to save many millions of dollars we, we want to engage with you as quick as we can to get this off the ground so it actually improved it improved the our time to sale and it massively re improved their return on investment okay so so guys what we're asking for your help on is to identify each of you three customers you want us to talk to all we need to know is who is the cfo to cover the accounts payable management we need to know who is the c the cpo so we can cover off the areas around contract management and contract spend we need to be able to uh we, we we'd be happy to do demonstrations for you and your customers we're able to help you do some testing of data sources to show them how it looks and feels net result is i've worked with ibm now for 30 years it's been impossible to see an application before now that has such a fast return on investment it can be very difficult and hard to sell IBM software. This is an immediate money return. So the value of integrity integrated into the Roger platform, bringing it together, gives us a compelling story for IBM, leveraging IBM data analytics software. Next slide. So those are my contact details there. You can reach out to me for our email. Uh, many of you on this call and, and that have been contacted previous to this know me very well. So I would encourage us to look at how we can help you to identify education customers, media customers. We have a, as you saw in the earlier slide, don't know if you can go back to it, Sam, we have a large amount of manufacturing corporations, companies that are buying and selling products um, directly to the markets. So looking on the slide here, like Diageo and Coca-Cola and Sony and Kingfisher, these are super corporations. Again, working with yourself, let's replicate that across the wider business.